Hi everyone, I'm Yasmin. Here are today's lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Learn the format of a formal letter Learn the vocabulary needed for a complaint letter Use the correct tone when writing a formal letter And before we begin, let me ask you a question. Have you been on a taxi or an e-hailing car before? Well, um, my friend has too, and it was not a good experience at all. There's only one way to go about this. She must write a letter to the e-hailing company. Let's see how to write the letter. Let's see how she writes a letter of complaint. Before we write a letter to complain about the incident, we need to know the type of letter we are writing. A complaint letter requires a formal letter because we are writing to a company and it is official. This is the page of your letter. Let us look at this task closely. The addresses account for format marks. Let us find out what else in the letter carry format marks. Here they are. These are the items for format. Sender's address, recipient's address, date, salutation, title, signatory. Remember how to write them and their positions. You must not get them wrongly written as they account for three marks in total. So, do get them right. Shall we look at the way the complaints are written? You cannot list the complaints in numerical fashion or in point form. All points which are listed in the question must be used and written in paragraphs. Link those ideas well so that it sounds genuine and has a smooth flow when you read it. A good letter uses good cohesive devices like another, furthermore, since, hence, although, and many more. Let's not waste time. We must get this letter written as soon as possible. We must first write the sender's address. That will be my address. Please do not crack your head to come up with a very difficult home address. All we need to do is be logical. I am staying in Kuala Lumpur, so here is my home address. Number 25, Jalan 35 stroke 50B, this is Sri Hatamas, 50480 Kuala Lumpur. Let's not draw a line to separate the next section. Now, we will write the recipient's address. Ah, yes. The recipient is the person who will receive our letter. Oh, I may have to look for the company's address from the app. Here it is. Okay, I need to write this down under the line. Managing Director, hop in, bracket M, Sandirian Burhad. M here stands for Malaysia. 77-80 Apex A Business Center 48500 Petaling Jaya Selangor Next, we need the date. Write the date on the same line where the last row of the recipient's address is written but on the right-hand side like this. Managing Director, hop in, bracket M, Sandirian Berhad, 77-80 80 Apex A Business Center 48500 Petaling Jaya Selangor 12 July 2020 You can also write the name of the person if you already know the recipient's name If not, you can write the person's job title like the managing director the manager of the chief executive We also need to know the salutation and the title we tend to generalize that all recipients are male. Do you know that you can choose to write Dear Madame even though the recipient's gender is not known to you? Do not fret. There is nothing wrong if you write Dear Madame or Dear Sir as a salutation. There is no gender biasness here. What's more important is the position of the salutation. Now. That matters because it carries format marks. Write your salutation to the left-hand margin of your paper. The next item in our checklist is the title. Choose a title that reflects your intention. Your title 
will focus the recipient's attention on the matter that you wish to raise. Look at the punctuation used in the title. We can use capital letters for the first letter in each noun, adjective, or verb. There is no need to use capital letters for prepositions like in, about, and on. Underline your title and align it to the left-hand margin. Look at the example on the screen. Before we proceed, here is what we have on the paper so far. Now, we have come to another item, the introduction. The introduction should contain a brief overview of what had taken place, the details of the incident, and state the issue that the writer wishes to address. So, we can write about the main complaint, irresponsible driver, details of the trip, name of the driver, details of the ride. Before we start writing this letter, please remember that we are narrating an event that had already taken place. Make sure we use verbs in the past tense form. The next pointer is the choice of our words. We need the recipient to understand our agony and frustration. Hence, the choice of words to express our experience must reflect these feelings. I have a few in my head already. What about you? This is what I have in mind. Dismay, frustrated, shocked, frightening, sad, turmoil, agony, rude, ungracious, revolting. Do you have other words that you would like to add? Using a circle map is definitely a practical way to prepare ourselves before we start writing. Someone once said, Failing to plan is planning to fail. It looks like we are ready to write. Here is my draft. I wish to bring your attention to the irresponsible attitude of one of the drivers in your e-hailing company. Here are the details of my frightening journey. I booked a car for a trip from Aikina, Damansara, to go to Surya Lagoon on 30th June 2020 at 2.10 p.m. The driver's name as shown on the application was Mr. Lim Chi Boon, and he was driving a blue sedan car. The registered plate number was HB7781. Now that is a good and compact introduction because it is direct, formal, and contains details of the ride. The following paragraphs should be about the complaints. Do you notice that we do not need to write number one for the introduction? However, the subsequent paragraphs will be numbered. Before that, let us take a look at her complaints. Impolite driver did not greet her. Speeding above speed limit. Speed limit was 90 kilometers per hour did not wear seat belt, overtaking dangerously, almost hit another moving car, talking on the phone while driving, did not drop her at the drop-off point, overcharged, original price, 18 ringgit, charge more for toll. The following paragraph will further elaborate the complaints I faced during that frightening trip. The driver was shockingly rude to me from the time I stepped into the car. The absence of greeting or response even after I said hi to him was really uncalled for. I felt that he was being very impolite and ungracious to his passenger. Since I was in a hurry, I had no choice but to get in. Furthermore, Canceling my booking at that point in time would only incur more cost for me as I would be penalized and charged for the cancellation. Despite the negative first impression, I still got into the car and to my surprise, Mr. Lim was not wearing his seatbelt, which I thought was a clear violation of road safety. That was the second strike. My third complaint is about his driving skills. The next 30 minutes in the car was the most terrifying experience ever. 
I am lodging a complaint as to how Mr. Lim had exceeded the 90 km per hour speed limit on the highway. And just after he drove past Yara Jaya flyover, he almost hit another moving car when he overtook the car at high speed. The tires even screeched when the car swerved back into the lane. I am still traumatized by that incident. Luckily, I had my seatbelt on. Otherwise, I could have lost my balance and got thrown out of my seat. All the underlined words and phrases are the complaints. Yellow shaded parts are the elaborations and examples. Turquoise shaded phrases and words are the link to the questions, which usually answers the question. Why am I writing this? All the examples describe the horrifying ride I experienced on that day. When we use these examples, it should give a clear picture to the recipient of what actually took place. Hence, be as detailed as possible in our examples. Can you underline the complaints, elaborations, and the link in the following paragraph? We can do this together as we read too. My ordeal for that day was topped with Mr. Lim's dangerous driving skills as he only had one hand on the steering wheel and another on his mobile phone to talk to someone. I was in terror during the entire journey as he was driving dangerously and was taking a very lackadaisical attitude on our safety. This driver is definitely an irresponsible person and should not be licensed to drive other people in this car. When he dropped me off, he did not stop at the designated drop-off point at Surya Pyramid, hence causing a scene when many cars behind us honked endlessly. I felt so embarrassed that day. All eyes were locked on me, and when I came out of the car, Mr. Lim left without saying bye or thank you, which was very ungracious of him, unlike the other drivers in your company. Let's check if you had managed to identify the complaints, elaborations, and the link. The answers are on the screen. Let me give you some time to check your answers. We have now come to another paragraph. In this paragraph, I have used some good words to express my feelings. They are turmoil, appalled, and overcharged. This is paragraph 4. My turmoil on that day continued when I looked at my mobile phone to check the charges applied for my trip. I was appalled to find out that he had overcharged me by 15 ringgit and 50 cents for the toll fare. The lack of integrity in this driver is worrying. Not only had this driver compromised the safety of his passenger, he was also robbing people in broad daylight. Can we do the same exercise as we had done with paragraphs 2 and 3? Can we check the answers now? Did you get all the answers? Complain. He had overcharged me. Examples or elaboration. By 15 ringgit and 50 cents for the toll fare. Link. This driver compromised the safety of his passenger. He was also robbing people in broad daylight. We have now reached the concluding paragraph. In this paragraph, we need to reaffirm our complaints and stress on the importance of the issue. We should also urge the company to take immediate and stern actions. Let's read together. I seriously feel that Mr. Lim is unfit to drive people around and your company's reputation will be tarnished by employees like him if you continue to rely on him to drive passengers around. Please take stern actions to correct such negative attitude so that your clients will feel safe to use your service. Before I end, I wish you thank for taking the time to read my complaints. Please do something quick before someone else gets hurt. Are you able to identify the writer's plea? Look at the underlined sentence. 
That is a powerful message that is being conveyed by the writer. And finally, end your formal letter with your signatory. Since I wrote the letter, I'm going to sign it now. Please remember to write yours faithfully before signing it. Your name in capital letters should be written below your signature. And this letter is ready to be mailed to the e-healing company. I have some tips and strategies that I would like to share with you today. They can come in handy when you prepare yourselves to write a formal letter. These are common errors you should avoid. Not constructing complete sentences or writing in point forms. Example 1. The following are my complaints. Driving very fast exceeds speed limit. Driver charged more than he should. The examiner would mark your points in number one and number two as being incomplete or another way of putting it is hanging because they are incomplete sentences. This is a serious error. So, you must aim to write all the points in complete sentences. Let us look at the second example. Example two. My complaints include the driver overcharging me, driving recklessly, not being courteous to his passenger, and many more. This sentence is a complete sentence. However, this is not the correct way to list your complaints in a formal letter. Can you spot the mistake done by this writer? First of all, you must not list, write a long list in only one sentence. Preferably, just stick to one or two points in a sentence. You will lose marks for content marks for the mere mention of all the complaints in one very long sentence. What more if you do not elaborate the points in the following sentences? Now remember this, the use of many more is not advisable. In a directed writing essay, you need to be more specific. Many more is a very general sweeping expression. So. Do avoid using this in your writing. Every time you write a formal letter, bear in mind the tone used should be formal too. Hence, slang words are not allowed. Avoid the use of contractions too. Write in full. An example of a contraction is isn't. You shouldn't write it as is not. Isn't wrong. Is not correct. Do you know that slang words like wanna, gonna, or the use of you for you are not accepted in a formal letter? Well, now you do. They will be underlined as errors and this will greatly affect your language marks. For example, you cannot write like this. I'm gonna complain about this driver of yours who made me feel pissed. Oh no! There are many errors in this sentence. Can you spot them? I will let you try this one on your own first. Are you ready? Let's look at the first error. Contraction. I'm. Do not use contractions in formal letters. The word gonna is a colloquial way for going to. Note to self and others, always use the correct formal spelling for exam. Slang word pissed for angry. Avoid using shortened words like the ones you always use to type in your text message. You, BRB, or LOL are definitely not allowed. So, be sure not to use them when you are writing for an academic assessment. Write their full versions. You as you. BRB, be right back. LOL, laugh out loud. Another tip is on the use of the correct tone for a formal letter. When writing a formal letter, you must remember to use a formal tone because you are writing to the authority. When you use a formal tone, the recipient of the letter knows that you are serious about the complaint and actions must be taken quickly to address the matter. 
Many of you out there are worried about the length of a formal letter that you are required to write. Good news! You need not to worry about the length. Your essay will be marked regardless of the length you write in your formal letter. You must focus on the quality of your essay and make sure all 12 content points have been covered. A reasonable length is usually between one to one and a half pages. The next tip is to vary your sentence structures. 20 marks are allocated for language. One way to ensure that we can get high marks for language is by varying our sentence types. Simple, compound, and complex. Avoid repeating the same structures when you write. Your sentences should not sound repetitive. This will only make reading dull for the examiners. So how do you do this? I want you to remember this. Change the way you begin your sentence. This strategy always helps. Here is an example from the letter. The lack of integrity in this driver is worrying. Not only had this driver compromised the safety of his passenger, he was also robbing people in broad daylight. The next tip is to have a wide range of vocabulary. You need to have a wide range of vocabulary too so that you do not use the same word over and over again. Using the same word repeatedly in any essay will only create a monotonous effect. After all, the objective of writing in an exam is to make your essay sound interesting and appealing for the examiners. You can build your vocabulary by using online dictionaries and by doing quizzes or synonyms. You can even find them online. I find those sites extremely helpful. The next tip is to avoid mixing your essay with foreign words. Sometimes, during the exam, you get stuck and you cannot find the word that you are looking for. What should you do? Do not panic. Try to rephrase the idea using simpler words. This is better than actually throwing in words from other languages or from your mother tongue. Finally, edit your work before you submit your paper. This is how you do it. I like to use the SOS technique when editing my own work. Sentence, other, ways, sophistication. Read every sentence slowly to yourself. Ask yourself if you could make the sentences better. Is there a better way to express your ideas? Are the words sophisticated and on point? Let's recap some of the tips and strategies that we have covered. Be sure to write them in your notebook. Construct complete sentences. Write each point in separate sentence. Do not string the content points in only one sentence. Be specific when giving examples. Use a formal tone, no slang words or text language. Use only English words in your letter. Cover all content points. Vary sentence structures and avoid repetitions. Have a wide range of vocabulary. Here is a vocabulary challenge that I would like you to do on your own. Rearrange the letters to discover the words. Hopefully, the words can help you prepare for your next formal letter writing task. Answers. Number one, urge. Number two, comply. Number three, nuisance. Number four, discomfort. Number five, lodge. Number six, hefty. Number seven, municipal. Number eight, public. Before we end, let's look at the complaint letter again.
Remember now, work hard and don't give up. All the best and bye everyone.